Hello friends, I'm Elizabeth Christie. I'm one of the consultants here at PRC and I'm the person that's been writing the holy moments. And I wanted to take a few moments to show you some of my favorite materials that are in holy moments this season. Uh, this is the second part of ordinary time. We're calling it harvest. We have um, materials for families to use with each other. And we have materials for congregations to use with families. And I'm going to show you two pieces of materials from each of those sections. So I'm going to start with something called out the door blessings. And this you'll find in our congregational pack. And I started doing this I want to say about five years ago with a congregation that was looking for ways to help parents um, uh, be equipped to be the primary leaders of their children's faith formation. So one of the things I heard from families is that when the kids head off to school, it was always so rushed and they were looking for ways for it to not feel so harried, shall we say. I should also let you know, I'm the mother of seven children between the ages of three and 20. And everything that is in holy moments I've used with my own families. Um, I have also used everything with congregations that I work with. I wor have been working in children's ministries for about 25 years now, and I'm on staff with a congregation near here where I am. So anyway, the out the door blessings are designed for you to be able to literally just um, copy paste. Let me show you. I'm going to bring it up. Uh, out the door blessings. Here we go. So I'm going to scroll up and you'll see up here, you'll have all these materials. Um, you will see how I usually go about doing it. Uh, that's there at the top. And then when you scroll down, you'll see the out the door blessing for that week. And what I have always done is I would just click copy and then I would paste it into our automated text server and set it to send at 720 on Monday mornings. 715 is also good, but 720 I find sort of um, there's something special about that time. Most things fall on 15s, 30s, 45s, that 20 kind of gets people's attention. And um, sometimes you have kids that have already headed out to buses at that point, but uh, the kids that are headed out to buses at that point also have cell phones. So one of the neat things that I was hearing from families was that they would take that text and then because they weren't together to bless their child as they headed out the door, they would send it and bless them that way. And the kids would send it back with a blessing for their families. And they'd use the same one all throughout the week. And it was just a beautiful way of uh, starting off the week, but continuing through the week and intentionally going forth, knowing that they are blessed and uh cared for. I had families tell me that uh, they had friends that loved this so much that they were forwarding it to them. So there's a ripple effect. You start this in your congregation and you're going to find it branch out to other places. It's really, really neat. Another um, material that is in our congregational pack is the bedtime stories and prayers. And I have been doing bedtime stories and prayers for a long time now. It's one of my most favorite things to do. And I have gathered on Zoom for years now, before Zoom was even cool, we were on Zoom doing this and the families will click in at 7 p.m. and whatever state of life they're at, sometimes they're coming home from swim practice, sometimes they are just sitting down to eat, sometimes the kids are all snuggled up in their jammies and ready for a story. But uh, it doesn't, it, the neat thing is that it doesn't matter where you are, you can still join. So they join on Zoom and I read a story and I take their prayer request and we pray over everything and then we send them off with the blessing. And it's it's just a lovely rhythm. I usually do it on a Wednesday, but Sunday night is also a good time. It's a nice check-in throughout the week. It's another offering in your faith formation. Uh, you're reaching people that you don't ordinarily see on a Sunday morning. That's a really, really cool thing. So let me show you what this looks like. Where did I put that one? Yeah, bedtime stories and prayers. Here it is. <laughs> All right, so when you receive this file, you'll see that there's information on how to get it started, how to launch it, um, how to gather, and then you'll go and you will see as you go down, 
that I have a, a a few tips, but this is this is where people are like this is what I want. These are the stories that I'm reading this autumn. Literally, I gave you my book list of what I'm using with the congregations I'm doing this for, and each of these have live links. So when you click on it, you can find it on your favorite online bookseller. I prefer to get it from my library or get it from my local bookseller, but at least you'll see where it is. So um, I, I center it around a theme, and we read it all throughout this season. And these are really excellent books. I've read each one of these multiple times. I love these books. Love, love, love these books. They're fantastic. Another thing I should mention is that I pay a lot of attention to making sure that books are representative of all the families that God has put here on this earth. So I am not sticking, um, I'm not sticking with just one representation of a family. Kids should be able to see themselves in everything that comes through your children's ministry. So that is part of what comes out through bedtime stories and prayers. So those are two offerings that come from our congregational pack. And then in the family pack, among a bunch of other offerings, we have Visio Divina and we have bedtime blessings. And I'm going to show you each of them. So our Visio Divina is really cool. It is a reading of scripture and it's some wondering questions and a prayer. And then there's a picture that I put with each of them. And families are encouraged to find a picture that from their camera rolls that they think coordinate with it. And it sounds weird to hear it described. Let me show you this. So we have RCL version and we have narrative lectionary version. So here we go. This is last Sunday's actually, August 27th, the reading about the midwives in Egypt. So you see this picture here on the right. That's the picture that I chose, but I encourage families to look for their own. You'll see the last wondering, I wonder what photo you would choose to connect with this passage. You'll see that it tells you the date and it gives you the scripture. You will. This is a live link. It will go right to it when you send out the PDF form. I highly encourage you to send out the PDF form because families can easily bring these up on their phones when they're standing in the grocery line, when they're waiting in the carpool line when they are um they have a few minutes before dinner is ready they can pull this up click the link read the scripture look at the wondering questions together and find a picture and then pray together it's something that fits into the those cracks in the day where things are kind of at odds and ends this fits right in my kids love it uh, another um and here i'm gonna scroll down just so you can see the pictures we've got the burning bush We've, <laughs> that lamb cracks me up, I love it. Um, the fog, God is the fog, and other, other people complaining. So this is all what you'd be reading through the Revised Common Lectionary this month. Let me show you the Narrative Lectionary, and then I'm gonna tell you the fun little twist on this Narrative Lectionary. So you'll see same features. You can click on the link. It'll take you to the scripture. You've got the wondering questions. You've got the prayer and people are encouraged to find their own picture to go along with it. Hence the Visio that goes with the Divina on this. And I'll just scroll down so you can see all of these. Again, you would choose your own pictures as with the families. It's really neat. So a neat twist on this is um, you've purchased this as part of the family pack, but it can also be used as the spine for faith formation. You can take these and you can base a whole session of, of your faith formation for all ages on these. The scripture is right there. It's what you'll be reading in worship. So there's that carryover. And there are lots of different ways that you can riff on this. So uh, you can absolutely use this as a spine for your faith formation. And the last thing that I wanna show you is our bedtime blessings. And this is a huge favorite of my own little kids, my littlest ones are 10 years, eight years and three years old, and they have them taped next to their beds. In fact, my three-year-old just ran through here with his and stuck it on the wall behind me. I don't know why, I guess he wants me to remember that he's got it. But um, these are separate bedtime blessings that parents can pray over the children and kids can pray over their parents. And there are five options this time. So God is near, you are dear, sleep in peace, blessed one. They're meant to be short. They're meant to be easy to remember and they're meant to be easy to repeat so that they can be whipped out. We're working on muscle memory here for when you're too tired to come up with your own blessing. You want something that just comes right out of your mouth, ready to pray over your children. 
The pictures are soft, um, they're very easy to print this out. It does not take a lot of ink. Post it right next to the bed. And it's a graphic that parents can keep on their phones too. So they could pull it up and have a blessing for them. So there they are. If you have any questions on any of these materials, please feel free to email me. My email address is Elizabeth, E-L-I-Z-A-B-E-T-H at P-R-C-L-I dot org. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Bye.